you're watching this video and you've ever calculated polymer usage, you've probably done it wrong. Not because of any mistake that you've made personally, but simply because we all have. Polymer usage in thickening and dewatering systems is the go-to measuring stick of performance and efficiency. But as an industry, we've been calculating it wrong. And by doing so, we've all missed a pretty big part of the picture when it comes to that performance, efficiency, and arguably most importantly, cost of ownership. Polymer usage is typically calculated as pounds per dry ton. As in, the pounds of polymer added to the dry tons of sludge going into a thickening or dewatering system. And that's pretty straightforward, right? Well, it's wrong. And here's why. The reason is that we're basing the calculation on the solids fed into the system. However, the amount of solids we put into any thickener or dewatering system is not the same as what comes out. Thickeners lose anywhere from less than 1% of the solids to over 10% depending on the thickener's design. Yet, this isn't taken into account in the calculation. So if a thickener has a dose of 10 pounds of polymer per one dry ton of solids by our current calculation method, but only gets 90% capture rate, in reality, the dose is 10 pounds per 0.9 dry tons, because we're only getting 0.9 tons out for every one ton in. Dividing 10 by 0.9 reveals the actual polymer dose of 11.1 pounds per dry ton, because it takes 11.1 pounds of polymer to get one ton of thickened solids out. Why is this an issue? Well, here's an example. Say we have two thickeners. Both require the same polymer dose as traditionally calculated to reach 5% thickened solids. We'll say 10 pounds per dry ton. So evaluating these thickeners side by side would show that they use the exact same amount of polymer to thicken sludge. However, let's say one of the thickeners has a screening material that retains a lot of solids and has a capture rate of 99%. So 1% of the solids fed into the thickener are lost during the thickening process. And the other thickener is designed such that it gets a capture rate of 95%. In reality, one thickener is producing 4% less thickened sludge at the same polymer cost, yet is considered equal under our current standard of calculation. To see this problem visually, Let's say we were using a thickener to fill up a digester that has a capacity of 1 million gallons. 1 million gallons at just over 5% solids is about 210 tons of dry solids. So, let's use our traditional method to calculate how much polymer this would take. The answer should be pretty simple. 210 tons of solids at 10 pounds per dry ton is 2100 pounds of polymer. Easy peasy. However, if we treat 210 tons of solids in a thickener with 95% capture rate and use 2100 pounds of polymer to do so, as per the math, we only get 199 tons out, which is 950,000 gallons, and our digester hasn't been filled. We'll have to treat another 11 tons of solids to top it off. So in reality, it cost us 2,210 pounds of polymer. It cost us an additional 110 pounds of polymer to reach the desired amount of sludge. With the cost of polymer, that's a pretty sizable math error. So you might still be thinking, yeah, there's a variance, but maybe it's negligible. Well, let's take a look at a 20 year life cycle and see just how much of a difference it makes when the rubber hits the road or the polymer hits the sludge, as the case may be. For this example, we'll take an 800 gallon per minute thickening installation, so two 400 GPM units, running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for 20 years, thickening sludge that is 1% solids. That's a grand total of 350,680 tons of sludge thickened over the installation life cycle, so just about 350,000. If we're using 10 pounds per dry ton of polymer at $1.50 a pound, that will end up costing around $5.26 million. So in theory, both thickeners life cycle cost of polymer usage would be $5.26 million to thicken the same amount of sludge. However, in reality, 
these thickeners aren't producing the same amount of sludge. In order to produce 350,000 tons of thickened sludge, thickener 2 has to treat about 370,000 tons and apply 10 pounds of polymer to each of those tons because all the solids lost during the thickening process, which makes the real cost of polymer about $5.5 million. That's a difference of $225,000 between a thickener getting 99% capture rate and a thickener getting 95% capture rate. And based on a theoretical calculation, we are all using these thickeners would have the exact same life cycle cost. That is $225,000 that is completely unaccounted for and is greater than the capital cost of one of the thickeners. Because none of this is accounted for based on how we calculate polymer today, and that's on a pretty average sized application, keep in mind, this doesn't take into account all the other costs of low capture rate, such as needing to retreat up to 10% of the wasted sludge, things like pumping, aeration, etc. Those costs don't even factor into this discussion. This is just a straight up math glitch of basing the calculations on what goes in rather than what comes out. The solution to this glitch in the matrix is super simple though. Just take the theoretical polymer dose based on the flow into the thickener, like we calculate it now, and divide by the capture rate to get the true polymer dose. Now that is easy peasy. If you want to check out a thickener that has a really high capture rate and still manages a super low polymer dose, take a look at the ThickTech RDT. The link is in the video description below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this.